45 trillion gallons uh, is the amount of water that's locked up in food that's thrown away each year around the world. 45 trillions is so much that I can't even really understand what that means like at all. So I did a very simple calculation and if you can imagine the Empire State Building, it's like 102 stories tall, big, massive building. Uh, if you can turn that into a water bottle, uh, 45 trillion gallons would require 160 Empire State Buildings. It's just so much water and it goes into the landfill with food waste. So I'm speaking today with Amanda Weeks, who is working hard to take some of that water out of food waste and turn it into a cleaning product. Let's jump in. I'm joined by Amanda Weeks, co-founder and CEO of Ambrosia. Thank you very much for joining me, Amanda. Thank you for having me. This is a very exciting time at the company and I'm really excited to talk to you about it. Awesome. Well, I'm really looking forward to hearing all about it. And so just so we can tell, um, I see a very cool photo in the background. Where are you taking this call from? Uh, I'm taking this call from our office in Manhattan. We're part of a co-working space called Primary. Nice. So I'm just in one of the conference rooms in my office. Oh, cool. Very fun. And so the, the reason I wanted to speak with you, and I'm really thrilled that you started by saying that there's this is a very exciting time uh, for Ambrosia, and we'll, we'll looking forward to hearing all about it. Uh, for the people who are listening and who aren't familiar with Ambrosia, what I wanted to speak with you about is the fact that you create liquid cleaning products, at least that's the first thing. And we're talking about basically sprays, like for counters and different surfaces. Um, and what's interesting about it is that it's, these products are usually about 90% water, if not more, uh, with just a little bit of active ingredients in there. And as you said on your website, and I'm just giving some context for the listeners, you're overachievers. Achie so you've made <laughs> one, which is called Velas, where the water and the active ingredients come from food waste. Mm -hmm. um, and you've essentially figured out how to isolate and purify water from food waste. And by doing that, you're di diverting food waste from landfill and you're saving clean water. And on top of that, it's $20. So there's a lot to unpack here and mm -hmm. I can't wait to hear a lot more about it. For the people who are listening, uh, we're all about sustainability here. So can you start us off by explaining why this work is important for the environment? Sure. So. I'm a native New Yorker and I grew up near uh, what used to be the biggest landfill in the world. Oh, that wow. was New York's primary landfill for uh, a few generations. It's now closed, uh, but that means that um, actually our waste from the city, which is a huge quantity, is traveling further and further and further away mm. to landfills because nobody wants them around. Um, which is very expensive and you know, the emissions from the trucks is one thing and then uh, landfills are the third largest contributor to methane emissions in the United States. Methane being a much more potent gas um, than CO2 in the short term at trapping heat in the atmosphere. Um, and so food waste uh, is something that I've been working on for six years now and touches upon you know, many pressing issues of today, whether that be climate change, whether that be um, you know, resource use, uh, consumer, respons consumer responsibility, corporate responsibility, um, and uh, water. Excellent. And so you mentioned about the uh, the local uh, the local aspect of of garbage, really, and that's something I've never really thought of. Actually, I've always just mm -hmm. considered if it goes to landfill, it's bad. But actually, what you're saying is that there are various degrees of bad when it comes to landfill because if you're mm -hmm. basically throwing away and it's going to a close landfill that's mm -hmm. requires less miles than having it go far far away uh to travel right right it's just it's just an an, an extra issue on top of that mm -hmm. um i prefer that we didn't have landfills um but it's just a, it's just um an element of managing our waste that has become even more um burdensome and unsustainable which is how how far away we have to take it yeah and with um with this element of water because like you like well you said and i repeated it at the beginning um the food waste that you're 
using is actually where the water comes from for your products. So what's the benefit of using the water from food waste rather than just filling it up from the tap? Um, so, so you're talking about um, concentrates, right? So um, when you buy a cleaning product that's a concentrate and then you add water to it from your tap, you're using water that was treated for drinking. Mm. And treating water for drinking is a very expensive, very energy intensive process. Right. And, uh, and so you are, um, you know, wasting drinking water, you're wasting the resources that were put into making that water uh, possible to drink. Um, and then, you know, it, it depends on where you live, but you know, we're dealing with water scarcity in some areas, not so much in New York city, but definitely in other areas of the country and around yeah. the world. Um, and, uh, you know, and a, a 16 ounce cleaner, which is what we're making. Um, if every household in the US used two 16 ounce cleaners um, a year, that's the equivalent of wasting 60 million gallons of water. Wow. And so if we can use water um, from another source that's not meant for drinking, but it's safe to use in other products, you know, we can save a lot of our, um, you know, our, our fresh water for, um, for drinking and for other uses. Right. So yeah, it's the knock on effect as well, because uh, it's not just the water. It's like you said, the energy required to clean that water and that contributes or goes back to where the energy is coming from, whether it's coal or, well, hopefully not, but whether it's, you know, somewhere else. So it, going to the actual food waste uh, part, because I, I find this really interesting in terms of, um, I, I'm just really curious to know how it works. Uh, essentially, you you get food waste, and I'm, I'm picturing all sorts of things. Um, so can you kind of walk us through it? I guess, first question, where exactly does it come from? Mm -hmm. So I'll start out by saying that uh, food waste on average is 75% water. That's what makes it so heavy when you throw it in the garbage. Makes sense. And so we have a demo facility right outside of New York City and we work with um, trucking companies. So we work with uh, waste haulers, waste collectors. Right now our facility uh, partners with a waste hauler that is bringing us food waste primarily from Google's office in Manhattan. Oh, wow. And so, and that's everything that's, that, that's completely mixed food waste. Um, we've, we've received um, whole fish before. Um, you know, we get all, all sorts of pre and post consumer food waste from their cafeteria. Um, kind of and uh, that, our, that you see that much food waste. I mean, the fact that a whole fish is just being thrown away. That's a whole separate topic, but okay. Yeah, yes. <laughs> yeah, it's something that we talk about a lot. Yeah. Um, but uh, so our facility looks kind of like a brewery. Um, and our, our first product is this cleaner because it was actually um, something that we stumbled upon accidentally as a byproduct of this process as we were developing it. Um, so you were just developing so. this process. Did you have anything in mind as you were developing it or just... Um, uh, you're um, trying to figure out how to actually process everything. Uh, a little bit of both. We we were originally focused on making fertilizers. Okay. Um, Makes sense. Which we may still, yeah, which we which we may still do, but this felt like something where um, it was a little bit different. There are other you know food waste companies that are trying to make fertilizers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, seems like a natural way to and go. So, right? And so, yeah. Um, and, and so we decided to explore this. So this was, that was in 2017. Um, and then we did, uh, we continued to, to trial that. We sent samples out to third party labs to test it as a cleaner on different surfaces against other products from conventional to natural cleaners. And it performed really well. Oh, wow. It outperformed our expectations. Great. And we were like, oh, that's, <laughs> that's interesting. Um, so then last year we worked with a design firm to um, work out all of our branding, our packaging design, our website. Actually, what you've seen is a splash page. Mm -hmm. We're just about to launch our full site tomorrow. Um, tomorrow, and just uh, for people listening, today is the 29th of January. So tomorrow is the 30th of January. So that's when 
uh, we'll probably be publishing this after that has come out. So for people listening, they will see the new site. Um, I guess for reference, we can quickly mm -hmm. share the screen here just so we can see what the current site looks like. Um, and go ahead and, sorry to, to interrupt. Um, so you're, you're gonna be publishing the, the newest uh, or moving away from this splash screen to a full site. Yeah, so this splash page is just for um, pre-ordering. So we've had this up for the last couple of months and it's just a single page website. Uh, we just bottled our first run of inventory yesterday. Oh, wow, congratulations. So, yes, thank you. So tomorrow we'll be um, launching our full e-commerce site and have bottles ready to ship immediately. Um, and, and so some of this will still be here. You know, the, it, it's going to look similar but it will be more expanded, more information. Um, we're also going to start working on a refill program. Mm -hmm. So the bottle is $20 um, yes. because it's reusable and most reusable cleaning products like the concentrates generally sell their first, um, their first item for you know, between 20 and $40. Okay. So we're actually, we're actually priced accordingly. Mm -hmm. uh, and then for our refills, we're looking at, um, at selling uh, four packs that will be three dollars each. So we're still fine-tuning that and working out the pricing. We're trying to keep that price as low as possible. Um, but you know, the we this is a this is a metal bottle. Mm -hmm. So um, you know, it's it's more expensive to make than a plastic bottle, and um, and it's it's painted it's painted with this um, sort of like terracotta like rubbery coating, and it feels really nice. It looks really um, nice to hold. Yeah, um, and so. We and, and aluminum is infinitely recyclable, um, whereas plastic and glass are not. Um, it can be back on the shelf in two months. There's aluminum that's been in circulation since the 1940s. It's cheaper wow. to make aluminum products from recycled aluminum than from raw aluminum. I think right now it's really for packaging the most circular material that you can use. Mm -hmm. Bioplastics still have a long way to go in terms of being able to be recycled. Right now they kind of just contaminate the plastics recycling stream because the plastics recycling facilities can't tell them apart. Yeah. Um, and then same thing when you go to a compost facility you can't tell plastic and bioplastic apart, so they just sort them all out before composting. So, so there needs to be an end of life strategy for bioplastics, um, which there isn't right now. And so we felt that um, that aluminum, and also this is a all of our bottles are overstock. So we work with a domestic supplier to source um, surplus aluminum standard size aluminum bottles. Um, so we're not, we're also not manufacturing them. And what do you mean by overstock exactly? So it's like surplus. So if someone, if, if a company buys a standard bullet shaped 16 ounce bottle. Oh, so those so, are made, like tons of them are made. Right. And then, so if, a, if another company buys them and then has too many, they uh, work with this uh, dealer that we work with where gotcha. we purchase excess bottles that are all that already exist mm -hmm. that all have already been made okay that, that's yeah that's great so that you're not actually requesting any manufacturing done on your behalf really right um, i noticed that the top is for the people listening they can't actually see it so um uh, i noticed that the top is doesn't look like it's made from aluminum that's correct um so the top is plastic mm -hmm. um it was the best off the shelf option um but it's clear and there are no um, metal parts in it. Mm -hmm. So usually you know, there's like a metal spring. Yeah. And so when you have a plastic piece that has other parts in it that are like other types of plastics, or other types of materials, it can't be recycled. So we chose a trigger that um, doesn't have any other parts, is also clear. Clear plastic is the most valuable because it can be re-dyed. Any other type of plastic has to be dyed black when it's recycled. Um, and it's uh, less valuable uh, on the market. And so black plastic we, isn't even recyclable, from what I understand. Um, oh yeah, me, I, that was that that that's uh, new information for me. <laughs> um, but it's that's probably it could be because of the downgrade. So it could be because could be. Pl black plastic's already been recycled, and then it probably can't be recycled yeah. again. Um, I've also heard that, you can only go ahead. Sorry, yeah, I've also heard that the. 
I'm not sure how true this is, but I've heard that basically the cameras on these machines that pick out the plastic, they have a really hard time seeing black plastic because it's mm -hmm. like a negative space. Oh, right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. There's a lot of, as I was saying before about bioplastics, you know, the way that our um, recycling system is run today is all, is, is very much relies on sorting um, and that's all optics. Right. So yeah, a camera isn't perfect. I mean, the human eye can pick it up because we know what it is as well, but you essentially have to program a camera to figure it out, um, right. which can be a bit tricky. So, um, so that's, I mean, that, that's really cool in terms of your, your bottles. Um, I think that's, it's a unique way to do it. And I, I actually didn't realize that aluminum is, first of all, infinitely uh, recyclable. And second of all, it's cheaper to use recycled. So it's actually even better because you're you're actively not wanting to go out into the into the world and dig up right. new stuff. Right. Um, going back to the food waste, just because um, it's kind of where we started, and I still have unanswered questions in my mind. So you get a whole fish from from one of the local uh, companies, um, mm -hmm. and I, I really like the picture of the fact that whoever's using this product is cleaning with a whole fish. Um, Although again, food waste isn't well, happen, but they're not cleaning with a whole fish. I do really want to make sure that everyone knows yeah. there's no food waste in here. We use food waste as a feedstock, like any other kind of organic chemical production. Um, so it's water, organic acids, and alcohol that are all that are all derived from food waste. But there's there's no food waste residues or food waste products in here. Make it makes sense. It's almost like there's vinegar or something in there that basically kills all the germs, uh, mm -hmm. in a way. That's what it sounds like to me. Yeah. And yeah, yeah, and and yeah, and it's and it's a process that we actually um, proved out with the state of New York. Um, so the state of New York Environmental uh, Regulatory Office funded a study to prove that our process was safe and to prove that our process okay. um, did sterilize um, the, the incoming food waste. And that was several years ago. And we did that in, in um, connection with getting our permits. Cool, okay. So it's, it's seal of approval is there. It, it really is clean. Well, that, that's really great to hear. And you mentioned fish, you mentioned all sorts of food waste. So it really is anything and everything. Yes. we. We started this company to create solutions for food waste, not necessarily to make products from food waste. Um, you know, that needs to be a part of the equation because we need to have end markets. Mm -hmm. But our, our first priority is, is to really provide scalable and sustainable waste management infrastructure to prevent food waste and potentially other biodegradable wastes from going to landfill. Got it. So that the whole concept is to make sure that nothing food waste wise goes into landfill. Right. So that, that's a big part of it. And so, um, uh, where, I mean, do you get this, the food for food waste for free or do you have to actually pay for it? No, we get paid for it. You get paid for it. Oh, even better. That's cool. So yeah, I'm assuming expensive. <laughs> it's an expensive process. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I'm, I'm assuming it's cheaper for companies to, basically pay you to take it rather than to ship it far away or like to the other side of the state? Right. So they do have to pay no matter what. That's how the the, the whole industry works. So they either have to um, send it 100 miles away to a landfill and then still pay at the landfill um, or they come to us. And, and part of our approach is that we um, our process was developed to be able to operate indoors without odor in, a, in smaller spaces so that we can have sort of these micro facilities around cities. So they're taking trucks off the road and they're providing a, um, a more local option, which then also uh, creates a huge cost savings for the, um, the whole value chain. The trucking companies, the food waste generators, so for example, a restaurant pays a private waste hauling company to collect their waste and that mm -hmm. private waste hauling company has to take it somewhere and they have to pay wherever they go and so we're just providing an alternative that's closer in addition um, many cities like new york have also passed laws to regulate food waste being recycled so there are many businesses in new york city um, if there is a food waste processing option available they have to by law send their food waste there oh wow 
So, okay. So you're, and, and you count as that. Very cool. So I was reading um, that your, that the way your design, the, the way your, these little factories, I guess for lack of a better word, are, or facilities are built, that I really like this term pop-up modular design was used mm -hmm. in one of the articles I read. What does that mean? I mean, how does that work? Yeah. So um, a, a major part of our thesis is that we want to reuse buildings. So many times these types of facilities require purpose-built spaces um, on many, many acres. And so what we have done in our demo facility, we're actually reusing a, a former meatpacking plant that was abandoned. Cool. And so we were, and so, so the, the, the idea of pop-up um, in the waste industry you know, which is a, a very big and very slow industry it means that if, because we're not um, building a, a whole plant, you know, we can, we can sort of pop up inside of a um, existing sort of empty warehouse space. Mm -hmm. um, and because we have a system that is modular as another aspect that allows us to kind of quickly deploy and quickly scale up. Yeah, absolutely. Makes sense. Makes sense. Um, there are a couple of terms that I think are, are really interesting to cover that, that are mentioned on the website and just are part of your ethos. So the first one is closed loop. Mm -hmm. um, what is that? Um, closed loop is a system in which you are um, creating a product that can then go back into being a product again, um, as opposed to the, it's the concept of cradle to grave versus mm -hmm. cradle to cradle. So to be able to, um, you know, to recover resources and materials from the system and then use them again, um, you know, to create a new product. So that, that to me sounds like cir circular economy, basically. Yeah, I mean, they're pretty much very similar. Yeah. I think I think it's it's really important, especially considering that once it's there's so many reasons to go with a circular concept. One of which is, I mean, as you said, recycling aluminum is cheaper, so there is potentially a lot of money to be saved in that process. Also, I think what people sometimes forget is that to create a new product is a lot of energy, and then you we have all of these um, basically these products that are just thrown away when. Hopefully, the idea is that you could actually reuse all the elements and not have to create new stuff from scratch. Um, now, there's another one that, that you use is resource negative. Mm -hmm. And that's really interesting. To me, that sounds kind of like it sounds similar to uh, carbon negative. Um, mm -hmm. So what is, what is resource negative? Yeah, so it's a term we made up. Nice. Um, and similar to carbon negative, we wanted to apply that type of methodology um, to resource use. Mm -hmm. So for us, you know, when we're making this product, we're creating, we're taking a waste material that could have gone to landfill, um, and instead we're using it to replace ingredients in products that would take raw resources to make. So we're saving raw resources from being used and keeping them in the environment. Um, and then we're also removing carbon by diverting waste from landfills and reducing greenhouse gas emissions. And so it was just sort of that, that two, two sides of that um, that we wanted to, to um, marry together to create the concept of resource negative. Um, and, and you mentioned that when you were first testing this out that uh, going back to the actual product that you were surprised by how well it worked. So mm -hmm. for people listening, how well does it work? Um, well, we um, either uh, performed competitively or outperformed leading um, glass and stainless steel cleaners. Um, we uh, outperformed in uh, cleaning different types of soils. So there are some uh, standardized lab soils for cleaning. One is called Hucker's soil. Mm -hmm. um, it's intended to recreate actually fecal matter. Um, oh. and it's used in, <laughs> it's, it, it's, a, it's a test of cleanliness in um, hospital settings. Um, and uh, we performed well on that. We also performed well on a, um, a soap scum uh, soil. 
as well as um, tests for RLUs, and those are called reflective light units. Um, and that's a measurement of kind of organic matter on a surface, and that's used a lot in, um, uh, in food prep uh, cleanliness sort of observation. And so we also performed well on, on those tests. Wow, fantastic. So can Velas be used in like a hospital setting or a food, like a professional food prep setting? Um, it depends. Um, we are not, that's not, that's something that we are not currently claiming. We're, we're focused on um, households right now. Mm -hmm. um, I think it just depends on the, on the application. Got it. Uh, but what you're saying is that the way the tests have been run, uh, people yes. should feel or and can feel very confident using this product. Yeah, it's it's more a matter of um, you know it it can be very expensive to register mm -hmm. um, for certain commercial uses, and so we have not done that, and so we are currently not trying to uh have the product we use in those settings got it yeah that, that makes sense um and so in terms of in terms of what's next you said this is a very exciting time so i'm uh what what exactly are we in addition to to tomorrow's launch of the new website uh what else is kind of in the works um well, I mean, that's, that's the big this, one. This is the big one. Yeah. Um, we, we just bottled all of our product yesterday where, um, you know, where we're rolling out our full website tomorrow where people can start ordering. Um, we're going to have um, at least some more uh, media coverage coming out. We're going to start really building out our Instagram presence. Um, and then we're going to be uh, shifting our focus to, to what's next for us. And so that's something that um, next month, my team and I will be sitting down to discuss our next priorities and, and what we want to make next. And so aside from being a food waste alchemist, turning garbage mm -hmm. into liquid gold, um, what do you do in your daily life to be environmentally friendly to inspire some of the listeners here? Um, excellent question. I like alchemist. That was good. I've never yeah. heard that one before. <laughs> I'm going to use that. Um, what do I, uh, well, I, um, you know, I try to, um, I try to eat meat very minimally. Um, I would say I eat red meat about once a month. I would say I eat vegan probably two thirds of the time. So I try to, um, I try to eat plant-based um, whenever I can, but I also don't believe in, um, in limiting yourself, so I, I believe that, that a balance like that is probably more easy to maintain for people. Um, and then also, you know, I try to avoid the use of plastic wherever I can. I I will run away if you try to offer me a plastic bag. Um, and um, I guess the uh, you know another thing is that I you know I try to. I try to stay active, you know, I, I try, I try to be, um, uh, it also for, for stress management, for, um, you know, for, uh, entertainment, I try to be very active and I actually don't spend a lot of time, you know, watching television and things like that. I try to be more, um, more outside. I think that, that, that's another thing, but it's mostly just, you know, trying to be conscious of my consumption, trying to avoid plastic, um, and then trying to, you know, buy organic, buy, buy, buy and support responsible products. I'm very into clean beauty and clean skincare brands. So that's, that's another area that I'm very interested in. Yeah. I think, um, I think those are all really good points. I, I like, especially what you said about going outside because that's, um, I mean, I, th I think that's so important and there's studies, all sorts of different studies talking about how important it is just to be in nature and how good that is for your health. And I think it's also kind of what you're saying is um, just a good reminder that we are part of nature and, you know, it, when it, it feels so good to be there, so we should respect it. Uh, nothing like just taking a long walk in the forest or by the beach or something. So, um, and for, for people who are interested in uh, learning more about Velez, purchasing a product, following you, getting more updates, where are the best places for them to go? So our website is velez.com. It's V-E-L-E-S mm -hmm. uh, com. And then our Instagram handle is um, at Velez Official. So yeah, Velez Official for people who are interested in following on social and for people who are, are interested in buying once this is launched, uh, I understand you're currently only in the U.S. Yes. 
cool. Um, and and will there be plans to expand globally at some point? Um, yes, I think that um, that will follow any uh, expansion plans on the waste management side of the business. Oh, I, um, I think that you know we would we'll see, but I would I would prefer not to ship this product internationally. I would prefer to as we as we expand our waste processing capabilities that we will you know that that was something we'll be implementing internationally and then we'll be i think that we will be um building those facilities and building out those end products based on the local market and it may be different products um but at this point i'm not sure i think it would be maybe a little bit counterproductive to ship this product internationally makes sense um and there's plenty of people in the u.s uh as well who will benefit a lot i think also, if you're able to set up these facilities and divert landfill waste in every country around the world, ideally, that's way better than just shipping waste from the U.S. Because uh, all countries have food waste, so they certainly could, mm -hmm. could do with a little bit of diversion there. So um, thank you so much for your time, Amanda. This has been a lot of fun, really interesting. And again, for people who want to purchase the product, it's fellas.com. Uh, and best of luck with the launch. Thank you. I must be Thanks so, so excited. Thank you very much for listening to this episode. Uh, if you want to buy some of the Vela's product, it's now available on their new website. Just go to velez.com and that's V-E-L-E-S dot com. If you want to learn about the company that Amanda has created uh, and one of their products is the Vela's spray then the company is called ambrosia and you can go to their website ambrosia.io follow us on instagram and tag us if if you enjoyed the conversation uh, so it's velas official at velas official and we're at sustainability matters today um, give us a five-star review if you enjoyed the if you enjoyed this conversation, and share it with your friends. The more, the merrier, as I always say. So, uh, looking forward to speaking with you in the next one. Thanks so much.